Welcome to episode 25 of the Guardian Project Podcast. I'm your host, Andy, with, with two intros today. So I'm going to do them. Go ahead. Um, I'm your host, Andy Flory. And like the sucker I am, I purchased secret layer bundles. Um, but for some folks, um, they're a little bitter blossom up about it. Wow. <laughs> Wait. I'm, all right, I'm here's proud my, and disgusted. <laughs> here's my second one. Okay. Okay. Right, I'm your host, Andy Flory. And um, Magic the Gathering is like like an ogre. It, it has layers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> You're such an onion. Oh, such an onion. And I'm your co-host, Mike Coyle. And, you know, a lot of people think Sarkhan is a busted planeswalker. I think he's unbroken. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Please listen carefully. This is a podcast where we talk about all things Magic the Gathering. But mostly Commander. What do we have on the agenda today? Uh, this week we're joined by Austin Davis from the Mana Vault. He's going to talk about his channel and uh, the work that goes into creating uh, modern meta matchups and, and pioneer gameplay. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit um, about how much we play the game Commander per week. It was a question that was posed uh, online. And uh, then we're going to talk about another Commander of the Week. The first mono black commander of the week. So proud. And probably not the last. <laughs> oh, I've got like 12. So <laughs> so we'll go ahead and start with our first topic. Welcome, Austin, from the Mana Vault. Hello. Nice to be here. Um, so before we get started and we talk about your channel, we have three questions for you as a guest. Always. When did you start playing Magic? I started playing Magic in 2014. What's um, it was right after Cons of Tarkir had come out. Okay. So, so the first decks I actually played, I picked up the intro decks for uh, M15 at the time. I picked okay. up the black-white deck, I believe it was. Okay. So I had started uh, playing. There was a couple friends of mine back in college that realized that they both played when they were younger, I think around 8th edition. So then they brought a couple of their old decks. So I, I guess I technically got to see a couple of those decks first. Okay. But the first deck that was mine was that... Uh, that intro deck from M15. That's very awesome. Nice, very nice. Um, your favorite plane. Do you have one? I really, I don't necessarily have a favorite plane, but I do like a lot of them. Basically, every plane offers something different to the game, and I really just like seeing new things. Obviously, I like cons because it was one of the first sets that I joined during. Um, one of the nice things about that is that it's so multicolor heavy. Mm -hmm. It's based on, you know, the all of the three colors. Three color wedges. Yeah, the wedges. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I really like the multicolor aspect of magic. Uh, you generally get more powerful spells and creatures and everything. Yeah, but yeah. not Because when you're black. forced to play multiple colors. Yeah, by not playing mono black, you can play <laughs> multiple colors. <laughs> so with all those extra colors on all those cards, you get to have more fun abilities. and Yeah. So Savage Knuckleblade was always one of my favorite cards. That's, oh, that's the teamer, that's cool. and he has morph, right? No, no, it's the teamer. It's a four four for three. He's got three, but it has abilities. three activated abilities. For oh, red, you can give yeah. him haste. For green and two, you can give him plus two plus two till the end of turn. Mm -hmm. But you can only activate that once in a turn. Okay. And then for two and a blue, you can actually return him to your hand. Yeah. Oh, I love cards that have all the things on them. Yeah. It just it just seemed like that set would be really fun to draft and like it try was. to go three colors. Yeah. It was it was I started playing more competitively during cons. Right. Because I started playing a little earlier. So I do like cons. And then the last question, do you have a favorite commander that you play with? Favorite commander that I play with, it it changes all the time, honestly. Yeah. And I just kinda go through the rounds and sometimes I even cycle back to decks that are years old so I'll, right I'll now if you had to pick your favorite right now torbran is the thing just because yeah. it's new mono red mm, i played yeah. with austin on sunday and uh i i got to politics my way into surviving <laughs> and then <laughs> yeah. winning which got very lucky <laughs> uh, uh, historically i like my uh my salt high deck with Muldrotha a lot yeah. that was always one of my favorite and ones. you also have the the bant bird which one is that again you're uh do you just put it into the into into the uh, into under the battlefield from the command zone? That was that was one of the first decks that I actually like yeah. really. Derevi. Derevi. That yeah. was the first one that I took out of the box and then made modifications to. Sure. So it was like my second main commander deck. I actually kind of took it apart at one point because it was I didn't really abuse Derevi that much. I used it more as a uh, 
a flicker type of deck because mm-hmm. Bant has a lot of good cards to flicker and has yeah. all the cards that can do that. Yep. But when Animatu came out, I kind of took out Derevi and switched it into Animatu. So I lost green, but I picked up black. So yeah. Got to change it up a little bit. That's, well, very good. That's because black is the best color. Sure. Wow, I love it so much. So let's talk about your channel. Tell us a little about um, the man of all, how you came up with the idea for the channel and, and wh- what all is involved. Yeah, so um, our channel, relatively new. We started at the end of August of this year, so we've only been around for four months now. Mm-hmm. Um, is that how that works? Yeah, four months. Yeah. Almost. It's, it's December. End of yeah. August, so we're, we're only a little over three months old. So we got the idea back probably towards the end of July, beginning of August. Uh, one, of our, one of our friends at the shop had an idea. He wanted to start up a YouTube channel. So there's uh, five of us that are like the main core members of the channel. And we just, our goal is to make content that's enjoyable to watch. Mm -hmm. So one of the main things are, one of the main inspirations for us as far as how we make our content, we looked at the command zone. Everybody likes to watch their their game nights uh, videos. Those get more views than any other magic uh, content there is oh, i'm sure um because they average a million views on every video they put top, out wow. top notch videos i didn't realize that so and those are fun to watch right mm-hmm. like it's you, you see a lot of magic gameplay like the more into magic you are the more gameplay you watch probably yeah yeah and i think they are able to capture a lot of people that aren't necessarily super into watching anything else a lot of the people that go and watch their channel only watch their gameplay. Yeah, yes. they don't. They don't watch MTGO or anything like that because, or their podcast let's be honest, episodes necessarily. Yeah, it's right. hard to watch MTGO. Let's be honest, MTGO is not the best thing to watch, especially Commander. Arena is oh. better to watch, but Arena you're limited to uh, standard and now Brawl occasionally and only on Wednesdays. Only on Wednesdays. Only on, on Wednesdays. recording Wednesdays. night, so I don't stream Brawl because I I record the podcast. Oofa. So we looked at that, and we wanted to try to at least encapsulate a little bit of what they do, at least in their early days, because obviously we don't have the budget, we don't have the manpower to do everything that it is what they do now. Mm -hmm. But if you look at some of their original videos, which are still good, fun Mm -hmm. to watch, um, we figured we could try to target that and try to do what they're doing there. But not for Commander. We wanted to target modern because modern doesn't really have anything like that the closest thing to it would be what star city does is that is that star they city do versus? like the star city versus yeah. mm-hmm. and the only thing with that is there's like no animations because it's basically just a live shoot yeah so you're you're basically watching a recorded version of something that i think they actually stream maybe on twitch i'm not really sure yeah mm-hmm. yeah they're just about jamming games really which is good too so that's fun to watch but sometimes you get a little bit bored while there's, especially in modern, there's a lot of shuffling with the fetch lands. Yep. And you know, there's a lot you of... You don't f- say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of things you don't necessarily want to watch. Sure. And can get boring. Um, so what we do is we edit all that stuff out. And we just want to make it so that the viewer can see everything important to the game, but not see any of the boring stuff, I guess. Cool. To make it easy for them to see as well with the animations yeah. we do. And they can still learn from it and everything. Right. And, and so you don't matches. do just modern. You also do Pioneer and you also have some videos of some box openings, which is, that's right. you know, it gives me the satisfaction of not having to spend all the money, but watching all the cards get opened. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love <laughs> yeah. So packs, the Pioneer, once that format was announced, we knew that we wanted to target that as well because it's a brand new market. I love it. It's similar enough to modern and you can only play it in paper or MTGO. Mm-hmm. MTGO is not very fun to watch. Like, uh, I mean, I know there's some people that really do enjoy MTGO. I think a lot of people don't. And I think people that even do enjoy it agree that it's not necessarily great. <laughs> and I think one of the benefits, though, of MTGO is that you can rent those decks, yes. which is probably mm-hmm. one of the best ideas that, that someone came up with because I don't want to pay... And I'm going to say almost as much as paper, but in some cases, some of those decks are almost as much as it is to just yeah. buy it in paper. They're normally at least half. It, at least half. But even at half, if your deck is an $800 deck, I'm I'm still not spending three fifty or four hundred dollars right. online. I'm just I'm not. I'd rather buy it in paper at that point, just bite the bullet. But you can rent it by having a subscription that might cost you 
thirty dollars a month or mm-hmm. for forty dollars a month. I do think playing and watching I mean, is is kind of two different categories uh-huh. too. MTGO is hard to watch. It's also hard to play. It's not that in two like right. the, the controls to, are not that easy. Yeah, you need to know them. Miss click for days. Yeah. I mean, that was me. You click through and you're like, uh, I just click through. And there's no it. shortcutting. <laughs> the, mm. I mean, you could do like, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, you mean you have to play out combos, right? Yeah, Combo decks yeah. are not good on modern yeah. on, on, on MTGO yeah, because cause you'll time out. S- some people, if they have, they presented it and you know for a fact if it was in paper, they would win. Yeah, you'll concede. You would you would just say, yeah, you got it. But on online, if you make someone play through it and then they time themselves out, which yeah. is it's pretty crappy, honestly. Yeah. But that you can't happens. shortcut the same you, way that you can in paper. Correct. Right. Shortcuts are allowed in paper. That's right. right. Wow. So Pioneer and Yep. So Pioneer we started similar to modern. Everything is done in the same way. Um I'm not the host of the Pioneer show. I'm actually the host of the Modern Show. But uh one of our friends, JC, is the guy that's doing Pioneer. Uh we're calling it the New Frontier where we play Pioneer. Uh, I like that. Mm-hmm. Kind of a play on the fact that everyone as soon as Pioneer was announced, everyone's like, oh, this is basically just Frontier, isn't it? But right. a little bit, uh, it has two extra blocks basically in it. Mm-hmm. I played Frontier for the four weeks that it was popular. Yeah. I played that deck that was just in Soul Artifact on Smuggler's Copter, which I can't do anymore. Banned. Yeah. Smuggler's Copter is banned. But yeah, I played it. It's essentially the exact same deck with just additional lands. <laughs> yeah. So we did the Pioneer. And then as far as the box openings go, that's something that we aren't focused on, but it's something that when there's new products that come out, that's the target time for when we want to open them. Yeah. Because um, right now, I don't think there's a whole lot of people that are going to be interested in watching Throne of Eldraine, but there's still definitely going to be people that want to watch those box openings. Sure. But I mean, even as time passes, people are going to be less interested in watching older new old product if you go old enough right people are going to be interested in watching something like yeah. onslaught or something crazy like yeah, that the city of guilds right something real old yeah. yeah i mean even even a channel like Tolarian community college that does mostly you know like like info videos they still do box openings yep. too on the yep. new stuff so. well, yeah whenever the new stuff comes out yeah. so uh, we did we did that deluxe edition back when it came out for throne of eldrain mm-hmm. um you did a Modern Horizons box. Did a Modern Horizons box and some collector packs. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll probably uh, the next opening probably won't be till Theros comes out, and Beyond it'll probably death. it'll it probably won't be a regular box. So I'll, we'll probably be opening um, collectors packs again because yeah. those oh, have yeah. been those have been confirmed to come out with it as well. Yeah. Nice. So we'll either do that or maybe the deluxe edition if they do that again, which. Knowing them, they, they never do anything just once. They do it multiple times until it fails. There's actually, we know, even there's going to be collector's packs for Ikoria now as well. Oh, really? Yeah, that was released on the Wizards of the Coast uh, Play Network product page. Take my money. <laughs> right? Oh, sure. Gosh dang it. I, I am curious in what they're going to do with those, like the alternate art kind of deals. Like we had the storybook cards. It's like, what are they going to do for Theros? And then yeah, what are they going to do for like Ikoria? Because I mean, the storybook... Or the, those alternate that was cool. frames. Yeah, those are something that's supposed to be existing from now on, and like you're going to be able to get them easily out of those collectors packs, like uh, like you were able to in Throne. So it'll be interesting to see if they do that. And I guess I wonder if those these uh, planeswalkers are going to continue on throughout. Now you know how they did the borderless versions or the yeah the, yeah the borderless versions of each of the planeswalkers for this set. So it'll be interesting to see. Yeah. Um. So where can everyone find your channel? So we are on YouTube, and you can just search for us by typing in The Mana Vault. Um, you can also find us at themanavaultyt.com. It'll take you right to our YouTube page. Um, so that's where you can find us on YouTube. You can also find us on Facebook by just searching up The Mana Vault. Um, I think it's facebook.com slash themanavaultyt to get there. Uh, Twitter and Instagram are both vault underscore mana. You got, so, you got to flip them there. Yeah, we we had to we had to, we had to flip them a little bit. We were uh, our name was already taken. So, for both Twitter and Instagram, it's Vault underscore Mana. Okay. Um. So today should be live now. Should be live maybe just later today. When yeah. This the episode video. guys goes live. Your video for Modern Meta Matchups where Coil joined them. Yeah. To play some games should be live. Yeah. Yeah. For some Infect versus Pants on Boys Boggles. Yeah, so that'll be a fun one to watch. You can see uh, myself take on Coil. We yeah. played we played some modern. Got the Infect versus the Pants on Boys. Pants on Boys. 
Yep. It was a lot of fun. I I actually have an Infect deck, but I was playing Boggles on that one. So it was fun to play a new deck. It was actually Andy's deck. It was. So we don't talk about Modern a ton on this podcast. So do you guys want to tell them briefly what each of those decks are, Infect sure. and Boggles? So Boggles is uh, a bunch of hexproof creatures that you can get down real cheap normally for one mana. And then you put some pants on them, which means you put some enchantments on them that boost them and give them extra power, maybe get some lifelink, uh, and you swing at your opponent until they're dead. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then for the infect, um, I'm sure you've seen it in Commander. Mm-hmm. Ten poison counters and you lose the game, even in Commander. Mm-hmm. Works the same way in Modern. So similar to the Bogles, you're trying to play a one-mana threat. Um, there's also a two mana threat, but it's just a simple one one that has a special keyword called infect. So all you're doing is playing those out, and instead of enchanting them up because they don't have hexproof, so your opponent can just remove them, remove them a little yeah. bit easier. Mm-hmm. You play a bunch of uh, pump effects to buff their power and toughness till the end of turn. So you basically try to kill your opponent in one or two attacks by just getting in for 10 damage all at once mm-hmm. or over the course of a couple turns. I like saying uh, if if you play burn but you have trouble counting to 20, just play infect because you only have to count to 10. <laughs> does it play, um, for Modern Horizons, does it play scale up now? Is that it a, does play scale up, Does yes. it play four of it's a staple now in that deck? Or? Uh, the version I played plays four. I think some might only play three, yeah. but it's, it's pretty much a good card. I mean... One mana to turn your infect creature into a six-powered creature is pretty good. Yeah. So this will be the first time I see that gameplay. Yeah. Um, the infect deck was it just green blue or was it green blue white? Uh, this version was just green blue. It mm-hmm. was the classic. No. Well, okay. So you. Uh, so can normally, add- you'd if you were to play white, you splash white for um, probably some sideboard cards. But in, in as far as in the uh, main deck, you'd be playing uh, Giver of Runes. So good. Cause oh, because she gives it allows you to. Too. It gives you unblockable protection. or protection. Yeah. So whatever you need at the time, um, including protection from colorless. That's true. Well, yeah, she can do that. That's mm-hmm. pretty cool. And then uh, the other card would be Teferi Time Reveler. Yep. Because it basically says your opponents can't try to remove your guy when you're trying to pump him up. Yep. Yeah. Most people play that in the side. I play that in my main, and I don't know if it's good or not because I don't play enough of it. The, the three fairy. Yeah. Hmm. Because, yeah. Then you can't get instant removed. I don't I don't have an Infect deck, but I we have played Boggles versus Infect, and it's yeah. just fingers crossed who gets the yeah, better turn the better, one and turn two. You got it's it. just opening hand yeah. for those two. When Boggles has the, has the path to exile, they have a much higher chance of winning the game. Mm-hmm. And when you don't draw any, good, good luck. Good yeah. luck. Because <laughs> it's hard to uh, get around a... In fact, creature that has at least four or five or six toughness or power, because then you just get those minus counters. Yep, it's and no good. No good. And then I don't know if you wanted to give a little preview, but Andy's going to be uh, coming into a film, not a modern meta matchup, but a pioneer episode the new, with the, JC. The new frontier. The new frontier. This weekend, yeah, I'm recording on Saturday with JC. Um, I will be playing um, Blue White Control. <laughs> Oh, surprise. Is anyone surprised? No. no any? Producer oh, Ryan Producer surprised. Ryan is super surprised about it. So, But uh, wait, Hogak's <laughs> not allowed in that format. It's Are you surprised anymore? Oh, he's super upset. Man. Yeah, I know. Oh, he looks really upset. <laughs> not legal, but um, I haven't decided on the deck list yet. Um, I should be getting that. I was spo- Honestly, I was supposed to have it yesterday. And then mm. I didn't finish it yesterday. Mm. And we're recording tonight. Is that because like you were gonna put like a bunch of smuggler copters in there, but now you can't anymore? That's exactly why. I was yeah. really I was really upset because after the banning, yeah. I added banned cards and was like, oh shoot. Uh, I gotta take all these banned cards out. No. Um I'm trying to decide between a few different deck lists. There's there's a couple of cards that I do and don't like, and I, I haven't decided which one I want to play yet. But mm-hmm. um just just playing blue white blue white stuff. I've never so I didn't play Torrential Gear Hulk when it was legal. I love that card. And, and there's four of it in the deck. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a good card. I, I, played, I played Teferi Hero of Dominaria. So if you were frustrated seeing it then, I'm sorry, because he's coming back. Yeah. But Jay's Rin's Prodigy, right? So we got him. He'll be back. I didn't play that when it was stand, when it was standard legal because I sold them when they went up to twenty dollars. Oh, that was a mistake. And then like five <laughs> weeks later, they were like a hundred and twenty dollars. Oh man. 
that was my biggest mistake. Hey, but so, Oketra's Last Mercy, it's going to get up there eventually for you. You want a stockpile of Oketra's Last Mercy? I got you. I got like 40. <laughs> Like a whole six cents for each card. Yep. Um, so we're recording that this weekend. So in the next couple of weeks, um, that'll be edited and, and, and will come out. So we'll, we'll tweet about that as we get closer. Um, so I'm excited. And then I think JC is also going to be playing Hardened Scales for that. Um, so it was just two decks that we each wanted to play. I didn't pick anything specifically to, to match up. But right. we'll see how it goes. Now, Hardened Scales got hit at least a little bit, right? From the Once Upon a Time ban? Um, I think... The list he was actually planning on running didn't have Once Upon a Time. Wow. Anymore. That's surprising. Um, it's which really was probably surprising. a mistake. But <laughs> yeah, you, you should probably run that if you can, but Melt Knight But can't. now he doesn't need to worry about now it because, perfect. yeah, he there wasn't planning on running it anyway. He laughs in everyone's face. Ha. I don't have to change my deck at all. Nope. Well, yeah. Un- so Once Upon a Time, that's still, that's still legal in Modern. Yes. Still legal in Modern Legacy and Vintage. It's not legal. Bank commander. And it's not legal in standard either. It's not no. legal in standard or pioneer. No. That card is so good. Yeah, a freeze bell. Yeah, it was my think. it was my favorite on turn two when you knew you already had your second land. You uh-huh. cast it to find a, just a better one dr- yep. or better turn two drop instead of the one you already had. Mm-hmm. In in the Simic Flash deck, that was great. Yeah. yeah. Veil of Summer is the same way, been in both standard and pioneer now. Yep. Yeah. I saw they had a GP over in Europe a week ago, I think. Uh legacy GP. Mm-hmm. They had, they had like 1,600 people at that thing. It's like one of the highest attended GPs in a long time. It's crazy. And it was for Legacy, but the, the, win, the, the winning deck format. Winning deck had two Vela Summer in the main. <laughs> Chef's kiss. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, green, green doesn't need anything else powering it up, right? I feel like people are in the zone where they're like, you know what? Green, you need to go away for just like at least six months. Like, yeah. please just go away. Like, you can be relevant, just yeah. not every important card let's pump up black again yeah i think wizards is just super uh high on green right now you know they've had a lot of really good green cards lately and if you look at that first uh of the commander well i don't know what they're called similar to like a spell book oh Oh, yeah i I don't know the name of the product off the top of my head arsenal no it's not the arsenal um it's it's similar to like the spell book, like the Jace's spell book or the Gideon spell book. Oh, the oh the, the next one that's coming out next year, the green one. The, but it's um, it's not a spell book. It's its own thing it's, and it's meant for Commander. Com- is it the is it just called Commander Collection? No, Commander it We be, talked about it on yeah, the podcast the already. Collection. It could but be it's, the collection. It's, and it's specifically but the they're doing green. They're doing green they're for doing the first green. one. So I think I think they've just been very high on uh bumping up green lately and want everybody to play green and hopefully white's next. No. You know, they do need to, they do really need to give white either a new niche or they need to just really up the power on white because I feel like we always dog on white. I mean, I think everybody does. A Unless spec- you're playing a few specific commanders that right. are that are mono white. There's like there's like four. Yeah, it's like especially coming from the perspective of commander, white needs help. And and they just need to give it like we need like over the next like few years, we need more like smothering tithe power level cards sure. for white because then then people would be more drawn to playing that color you know morrow actually has come out and talked about that and said that the color pie really is the the biggest thing restricting white like you still they still want to be faithful to the color pie and it's hard and commander is not a format that they normally or they used to at least design cards specifically for so sure. stand, standard supposed to be low to the ground hit you and your opponent you only have one opponent and they have 20 life right so well, we'll since, see. since we're talking more about Commander now, yes. our second topic is is a question that we found online that um, it really asked um, whether or not the amount of time that you play Magic affects how you build your decks. Yep. Um, and then to expand on that, we want to talk about whether or not it affects or we think mm-hmm. it does or does not affect how much money we spend on the game uh-huh. or what, what types of cards obviously we play, right. I guess, deck building. So... Um, I figure we, we could start with how often we play on the formats we play. Sure. Uh, I play commander at least twice a week. I ha- I'm in a, um, a Monday league and a Friday league. And then a lot of times our kind of normal, uh, pot of people will get together on Saturdays. Um, and then every once in a while, like last night I got together with a couple people and played uh, commander there. So you're, so two, two to four, or two to two to four nights a week. Two to four nights a week, Commander, and then Modern. Uh, I'll play 
as of right now, it's once a month, but that's because I was building a new deck and I finally have it all together. So it might go back to once a week. Um, I fin- finally finished my my Hedron Crab Vengevine deck. So um, hopefully I'll go back to once a week for, for Modern. And then I play um, also in the Monday Night League. Um, I haven't been playing on the Friday League, but I play on Sunday afternoons, mm-hmm. um, just casual. Yeah. And then... Um, if our group gets together on Saturdays, um, we'll do that. But a lot of the time after F and M, um, Coil and some other folks will sometimes just come over and we'll just play um, later. Yeah, like at our house. And so, so I'll play like eight hours of Commander on Fridays. Yeah, I mean, I think this last week it was like two a.m. and we're like, All right, we we need to go to bed. Yeah, I say stop playing your your deck that takes twenty minute turns. You yeah. know who we're talking about. It's not you one know, of us. You know who you are. You know who you are. And um, we, yeah, we were like, we, ha- we have to be done. But so I think we both play. So I guess if I play on Monday and I play on Sunday and then sometimes occasionally I'll play on Fridays now, mm-hmm. but now that I'm free again on Tuesdays, I went like this week I went to draft. Yeah. So I got to play draft. Um, I would say I'm also from two to four nights a week. Mm-hmm. And then I do play a decent amount on arena. Yep. So I play, I do at least my daily quest. So even if it's only like two or three games just to hit whatever it is that I'm supposed to hit. So I would say I probably play every day just right. you know, because of that. And then I, I likely Google or do something every day just because when I'm sitting there, you, you just do it. So I think that kind of segues to the next topic, which is because the amount we play, does it affect, uh, let's say, how much we spend on the game? Um yeah so i think we both would say we spend more a lot more yeah yeah it's a problem it's a problem i know when i first started it was just like when i first started playing commander it was i I had decks and they were fun to play and i was like but i really want to win a game and so i bought a couple (laughs) more cards upgrade decks. but i really want to i want to win more and then all of a sudden i had a mono black city c storm deck i was like oh wait you want to tell everyone how you won every time there was like one of two ways you want me to go through? No. Okay. It was either infinite mana or not infinite, like a ton of mana into Torment of Hailfire or a ton of mana into an Exsanguinate. That, that wasn't even the Storm deck. That was just my normal mono black deck. The Storm deck won with Aetherflux Reservoir Triggers. Oh, yeah. There was also that one, yeah. I guess. But so, yeah, I think you did. You bought more to get more competitive. Yes. Yes. That was originally, yes. And now it's more, the more I play my decks, the more I realize... Oh, it could use a little bit of this. It could use a little bit of that. So I'll buy cards here and there. In fact, I have some cards coming in to upgrade my Morophon Everything Tribal deck because I noticed that the mana base was definitely crippling that deck uh, in some games. So I picked up some some Rainbow Lands uh, mm-hmm. to help the mana base. Um, so yeah, and, and I guess playing more would say you look for weaknesses in your deck and you try to improve them, you end up spending more money. Sure, and, and I think... I, I don't play standard and paper anymore. So we used to play standard and paper yep. a lot when Amonkhet and Kaladesh and Ixalan were were in standard. Yep. And then when Arena came along, because I didn't want to play on MTGO, mm-hmm. and, you know, we kind of briefly touched on that. It's not the most friendly user face. Um, I, I Arena came along and I said, well, this looks like it looks like Hearthstone. Yeah, it but did magic you know it it's it's a friendly user face it's attractive it is smooth Uh, i had its kinks they've they've worked a lot of those out now yeah but now when each set comes out i might buy like that that bundle for like i don't know what it is like is it it's not 99 bucks i've never spent money on arena i I have no so i do i do the bundle where you get like a certain number of packs, you get like two of the promos. Okay. And so you get that bundle and I'll open that. Yep. And usually it gives you enough wild cards that you can make like one decent deck. And then when you play enough of your daily quests and then you just win actual cards by opening packs, yep. you can make enough to get like maybe a second or even in some cases a third. And especially if you're playing a competitive deck like the Cavalcade of Calamity deck, which is majority not like commons and uncommons. Right, yeah. It, I think it has, I think your rares are Torbran castle embrith uh and i don't i know that i think that's it i think that's it yeah so you have eight rare wild cards and the rest are commons and uncommons and you don't have to count your lands you don't even need anything you know because you have lands right because it's mono red right right yeah and so you don't have to spend any money so like that deck is very good and you don't have to spend money on it yeah but i find that i spend money now on arena for standard but i'm still buying cards for commander right so 
I know there were a lot of people worried about whether or not Arena was going to destroy Paper Magic, and I, I think the answer is it's not. It's not. And it, in, in fact, for people that like to play standard at FM, they're spending double money because well, they want to yeah. play it to practice on Arena, Definitely. but then to play that same deck in Paper. Yeah, if you're if you're looking at the numbers for people playing standard and paper going down, just know that that was Oko's fault. That's that's just the state of standard right now. People are still jamming games all the time all in the time. arena. Oh yeah. So it's 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 just the state of power in standard decks right now, which is keeping people away from playing in paper. I mean, once they balance things, once Theros comes out, things will come and they'll be new, and then uh, those numbers will shoot right back I know back a ton up. of people are excited for Theros, so oh, yeah. I expect there to be a, a decent shift, and I think just banning Oko and some of the more broken green cards in standard have, have at least started to make a positive change yeah. on standard. So, um, yeah, the amount we play affects how much money we spend because I agree with you. So you, you played it, you found some issues, you yep, ordered yep. more expensive cards for your mana base. I find that I'll play a deck like I have a Torah brand deck and Austin has a Torah brand deck. And mm-hmm. he played like three cards that I don't even run in the deck. And I was like, you know what? Those work way better than the three crappy cards that I have. Because I, I, I at first kind of started with, I only want to spend like 50 bucks. Yeah. And I already had a lot of the red cards because you don't throw a lot of red cards and I don't build a lot of red decks. So right. I didn't, I didn't use them anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I after I left, I said, well, maybe I can just you know put these into my cart on TCG Player for now, so I don't forget about them or just write them down. I wouldn't have bought those had I not played against that Tor Brand deck. Right. And I find that some people have have told me the same thing when they play against a card in one of my decks. And like, what is that card even? Right. Like what? Like I play the card Overburden in almost all of my my decks that run blue. It's two for an enchantment. This is whenever player casts a creature spell they have to return a land to their hand you know what that card's really good on turn two in commander against yeah. someone who's playing a creature deck yep it doesn't do a whole lot to you if you're playing a spell slinger deck right and i've had people say you know what maybe i need to pick that up mm-hmm. and that card has shot up in price i think it was super underrated before mm-hmm. foils are like at are they at 60 now 40 they're like 80 they're like at Okay, they're at 80. Yeah, at one point, they were up to like 200, but I think they fell back down to earth a little bit. Yeah, people probably were like, oh, I have a $200 card. Let me sell that one card that I'm not using. Yeah, yeah even Austin, we were talking about this a couple weeks ago. He goes, how many overburdens do you have? I said, well, I have the foil one when I foiled that my Noyan Dar deck, but I think I have four overburdens, and I think I run three of them. I just, It's a good card. Does it work specifically with a commander? Uh, for one of them that I have, yes. The others? No, it's just a value card, and I, I like running some value cards. Right. Like a Ristic Study. You run it in every deck that runs blue. Yeah, it sits out. People get irritated with it. They but it does it. the value. And, but it's and they one don't more, target your commander. And it's one more thing that they target that they're not going to remove your commander with. That or the, the one important thing you want them to remove. So, yes, I agree. Um, does this also affect how many decks you get to play? That was kind of the other question. So, if we're spending more money and we're playing more, does it affect the specific decks we play definitely 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 like like we mentioned before on fridays i'm playing from like 6 30 to 10 30 at a shop and then i'm gonna go play with our our pot of friends afterwards until two o'clock in the morning i like to play a bunch of different decks um decks either and play testing or decks i want to play again and you know playing it's it gets boring for me at least playing the same deck over and over and over again so uh, and I know it gets boring for if you play with the same pot of people. So it's nice to bring out some of my more consistent decks against new people at the at the game shop, the local game shop, and then bring out some of my more janky decks with friends. Um, also, I don't like playing power with friends because, you know. It's better, though, to play power with friends, though, than it is to play with strangers. So I think we always do that, and, and that, that person plays it once. Yeah. And you got your fill. All right. And we don't have to away. see it till next yeah, week. Put it away. Put it away. You don't you, you cast omniscience once tonight, just put it away. But the other yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I played Joda on Omniscience and and then felt bad for dropping fourteen planeswalkers. Um and I did that when I was playing against Austin with Torbrand. <laughs> L- luckily I got knocked out of that game before any of that happened. So, so he didn't have to I didn't have to deal with it. He didn't have to deal with it. The other guy I, I said you know, he kind of looked at me and he looked at Austin. He goes, I can, I can take either one of you out. And, and I looked at him and I said, well, I don't really have a whole lot out, but he's playing red and he could, you know, he might have something. It was not the greatest argument. I no. was actually making a better case against myself with what I was saying. Right. 
<laughs> and then he swung at Austin. He's like, thank God. Yeah. Did you have, you knew Joda out and everything already too? Uh, I think Joda had been killed and it was a bad board state because I had one planeswalker at the time. But then oh, the okay. next turn I was able to play Joda and Conflux. <laughs> and then from there I was able to go ham. Gross. Yeah, it was gross. So I would say, yeah, it also does affect that because I think the other thing is in Commander and it, maybe it's just me. Well, I don't know. I'll ask both of you. Do you take apart decks when you just, I mean, I think we all take apart decks when you don't really like them, but if you like the deck, do you just kind of leave it assembled and you're like, okay, well now I have that deck, but I don't play it a lot because it's just one of my older decks. Cause I have like, I think between me and Nick, we have like 24 decks now and there's a deck that I haven't played in like six months. Is I just, I mean, I, so I used to try to be uh, friendly to my wallet and, <laughs> and make two decks per mana base that I put together. So like I had um, Galta in mono green and uh, Yeva and Yeva in mono green. And I would kind of like take one apart to put the other one back together and go back and forth. But I actually find that to be kind of annoying now. Yep. And uh, I don't, I, I don't actually have Galta and Yeva. That one is actually a unique thing where that one is still like that. But now I, instead of having one mono black deck at a time, I might have, I don't know, three mono black decks <laughs> at a time. But you don't have three Cabal Coffers and three Urbergs, though. I, or do you now? I have two and one in foil. Okay. Because I thought about foiling out she at one point. That's another thing is, you know, you. I thought the same thing. You know, you're like, I'm going to build one five, five color commander deck and I'm just going to switch between two different decks. Yeah. And it's like, well. Doesn't always work. It's not fun. It's not fun. You, have, you forget one card and you're like, I only have 99 here. Shoot. Or I have 98 in my commander. Or you just don't want to spend 40 minutes moving them. I just yep. don't. Yep. So when you build two five-color decks, you have to have two five-color mana bases. Yep. And then you want them it to be... It tends to be pretty expensive. Expensive. And you yeah. don't want it to be expensive. But but you do it. Yeah. And it's hard. Yeah. And we Again, I think we might be outliers here. Sure. I don't think everyone's like us. We, there's tons more out there like us that are spending money because they don't want to move things around absolutely i normally just give up on a deck if i find that i don't even if i like it and i don't play it enough and there's cards that i really want from that deck for a different deck i I normally just strip it for parts and i leave it assembled to the point where if i wanted to i could put those cards back in it but that hardly ever happens that's that's the state of my ilharg deck right now actually that's my um my Narset Enlightened Enlighten yeah. Master. I played that yeah, and it was just... M- Maloku or whatever? Or yeah, I, I, it was an extra turn deck than the Narset deck was. And then I said, well, this is this is way too consistent. And nobody, nobody had fun playing against that. And I actually legitimately felt bad playing it. And so I said, well, let me take it apart. But I had all the extra turn spells. Right. So I said, well, I want to be able to play this in something that might not be as consistent. But maybe mm-hmm. when it does go off, it's a cool way... And then I can win. And so I put together Maloku, the Clouded Mirror. And it works with that the new Mystic Sanctuary card, mm-hmm. which makes it so that you can put the, the, the extra turn spell back on top of your library, return that land. And so it's an infinite in a way that not a lot of people play because it's a super expensive deck. And unless you had those cards, I don't think anyone's going out of their way to build Maloku infinite turns. Right. Did you end up getting the card from Portal Three Kingdoms? For I that deck? did. I got yeah. the Judge promo at when Command I was at Fest Chicago. Command Fest Chicago. So. I wasn't. I, I wasn't sure if you had gotten that card. I know you said that you wanted to. But. I did. So I have every extra turn spell that I can play except Savor the Moment. Right. I just I couldn't find when I was there, and I just I didn't. I haven't ordered it or anything. Yeah. But every other extra turn spell that you can play in that deck legally is being is being played, and I need to get the. Um, it, the mono, the it's the blue land from World Wake. Is it Magosi the Water Veil? Um, the one yeah, that yeah, that card's bad though. It's bad, but it's an extra turn deck. I should just put it in there. It's you can the, take an extra turn, but then you have to skip a turn. No, you skip you, your next. Turn. You skip your next turn. Oh, okay. But if you can stack up multiple extra turns, then in that case, it's okay because then you can, you can sure. I guess nullify. I don't know, but just for flavor reasons or for mechanic reasons, I should just do it. It's not an expensive card. It's like 20 cents, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cheap. Now, between those two decks, though, you did have your Edric Spy Master of Trust deck as well. I did. Right? And that that is in the same state as your Illark deck. So I okay, played the, yeah. the blue the blue green Edric deck where you draw a bunch of cards, you're likely going to draw into an extra turn, and then you just go ham that way. Yeah. That was just too, too consistent as well. And I will say no one, including me, 
likes to play against an extra turn deck, so I don't bring it out often. I, I don't, re- and I do not play it at the shop. The last time I played against it, I remember killing Edric enough times where it cost you seven mana to get him out, and I'm like, okay, I'm done killing Edric, and then you just took like twelve turns in a row. Yeah, it's it's just it's <laughs> it's too good, and when you're at the shop, it's not fun for anybody. They can't, you know, people come to play a game and to have fun. Yeah, I don't mind losing to a ridiculous combo, but I do mind losing to infinite turns. So, you know, it took it took me a while to realize that, obviously, because yeah. I just wanted to do it so I can say I did it. Right, I've done it a lot. Yep. So now I don't do it very often, but no. I have the cards. I'm not going to sell out of them. I think they're cool. Sure. And I, I mean, and and this is not to say that you know you can sit down at a pod and say, okay, everyone's playing really strong decks. Let's all play really strong decks against each other. This could be fun. We've done that. Yeah. And 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 you know, not to take away from that, but just don't sit down with a power nine deck when everyone else is playing group hug. Please and don't. Jank. Please don't. Right. Um, and then um, does this affect our deck building uh, you know that i think we we pretty much answered that question yeah. which was I, I think it does the more you play the more cards you see play testing is the number one most important thing you do when you build a deck i mean other than putting 99 cards together and buying them yeah. and cost you mean like you need the cards <laughs> you need the cards to begin with but then you know play test we you know last week we talked about how to build a mana base and number one thing is is you need to play test you need you need to make sure that your deck works yeah. the way that it's supposed to. Mm-hmm. And I think the amount we play, we get to see a lot more decks than a lot of people. And we talked yeah. a few weeks ago about how difficult Commander is to get into because there's just so many cards you have to learn and there's so many cards that just warp the game when they come out. Even if they're just a, just an uncommon, you know, Narsa, part of Veils is game warping when she comes out. Even if yeah. even if she's not doing anything, she's game warping. And, and I think that we play up to potentially four times a week, we see a lot more cards so we know yeah. what we do and don't want to play. Right. I mean, I mean, and just in terms of those game warping cards, just look a little bit even further back. I know it's banned now, but Paradox Engine. Paradox Engine yeah. was the core of like 20 decks out there at one point. And even if it wasn't the core, you would just include it because it cost five colorless and you were just more consistent. Yeah. It just helped. It helped almost every deck out there. Which was the reason it got banned because yeah. it, you didn't have to do any work to make it good. Nope. I mean, you could do way more work. You needed real you needed things that untapped for to make it work. You know, most decks play a card that untapped. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah. Soul, Soul Ring happens to be a pretty Soul good card. Ring, Soul I, Ring. I still think that that card shouldn't have been banned. But I, you don't think Paradox Engine should have been banned? I'm a believer that most of the cards on the ban list for Commander right now don't need to be banned, though. Okay, give just tell me one more. Just and for example, Gifts I, Ungiven. Okay, and what does that card do again? Uh, so you search your library for up to four cards okay, with different names, mm-hmm. which in Commander, I mean, as long as you're not looking for basics. Sure. Easy to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and you choose an opponent. They put two of them into your graveyard. So then the other two go to your hand. It's four mana. I mean, there's intuition in the format. Yeah. Which is you're not three right. mana to search for three cards and you only you only get one of them. But they they work in similar ways. Yeah. They do, and th- I think the biggest concern for the reason that it was banned originally is because of um, unburial rights plus Elish Norn or Iona. But Iona's banned now, so it's not Iona anymore. Sure, because it says up to four cards, so you can just grab unburial rights plus creature, yeah. and they have to put both of those into the yard. But if you think about it, that's turn five, maybe turn three, or turn four. Yeah. And that's not really that oppressive. Like, a turn four um, Elish Norn isn't that oppressive in Commander, I don't think. It's, it hurts token decks. It, it yeah. does. It does hurt. Deck metas. But, like, I don't know. There's three other players. Somebody's probably going to be able to have an I answer. Mean, I've seen someone reanimate a Vorinclex on turn two. Right. So, that's, I mean, that's so much worse. That's so much worse. I agree. I agree. So I don't I don't know. Like gifts ungiven is definitely one of the things that I think should be unbanned like first. Can like, we just get coalition victory back? Coalition victory doesn't need to be banned. That's a lot of hoops you have to jump through to win the game. But I think it's because there are cards that are all five colors when they're out on the battlefield. Assuming it's, you have it. How much mana does coalition victory cost to cast? Is eight. it is it eight Wooberg and three? Yeah. yeah. So the fact that you need eight mana, I mean sure you can cheat it, but I guess. You're going through a lot of hoops to well, to I, have a trans guild courier plus yeah, trans guild plus cur- cheat out a spell, plus have five different land types at the same yeah. time. 
It's it's a lot of hoops. I don't think it needs to be banned. I mean, sure, it says I win the game, but I'd like for and I don't know if it's if it's unbannable or not because making infinite mana in the color green is fairly easy as well. Yeah. Um, biorhythm is is yeah. on um shaman of the forgotten shaman ways. of the forgotten ways. You have to pay mm-hmm. eleven mana, tap it, and have ferocious ferocious. Ferocious yeah, uh, uh, creature power grade is it eight? Four. Not no, for, not ferocious. Not formidable. Ferocious. Formidable mm. eight. Mm-hmm. I think it was for. And you have to have creatures with power eight. Yeah, or formidable greater. is just you need to have eight total power. Eight total power. Yeah, ranges. and then and then you have and you tap it and pay eleven, yep. and each player's life total becomes the number of creatures they have. Yeah, but that was just the spell, and the spell itself is is banned, but not shaman. Yeah. And at that point, it's like having the spell because shaman's coming out on turn three or four. Right, and if you have shaman. That means that you can activate it and stay alive. Whereas right. if you just play Biorhythm with no creatures on board, you're, you're dead. So. Right. I I really, strictly for flavor, wish they would unban Braid's Cabal Minion. It's a really oppressive card, and I totally understand why it's banned, and I don't disagree with its banning, but it's one of my favorite characters I've ever read a story about because she's just crazy, and then she touches the Mirari, and she's like, whatever. You can't make me more crazy. I'm already crazy. <laughs> Uh, well, we digress a lot. So we play a lot. We spend a lot. Yeah. Changes our deck building. Um, and affects how many decks we play because we buy so many decks and we have a lot either half assembled, disassembled, mm-hmm. sitting and collecting dust. But if there was such thing as an MTG grenade, my living room looks like one went off. Yeah. My, my computer room looks like one went off mm-hmm. and currently my basement looks like one went off. I cleaned up a while ago in, in the game room and... I tweeted about it, mm-hmm. and I, I think I got so many um, sympathetic responses. They were like, <laughs> you're not alone. You're, it's not just you. Um, but, yeah, yeah so so I, I do think, yeah, playing, playing more affects a lot. A lot. If we only played once a week or once a month or once every other week. I'd probably have like four decks, maybe. Yeah, yeah I yeah. think so. And I think there's a lot of people like that, too, and that works. Yeah. You know, they just want to come and have fun a few times a month. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you want to move to our final segment? The final segment of the week. Da-da-da. Commander of the week is Ayara, the first of Lochthane. Is that how it's pronounced? Loch- uh, it's I'm surprised that it's a mono black commander. Are you? From this guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh- From me. <laughs> no one would ever expect me to play mono black. No. Yeah, it's L O C T H W A I N. Lockthwain. Lockthwain. Lock Lock or if you pronounce it German, I, German like Lockthwain. Lockthwain, I guess Thwain. technically, because the I comes after Ten, the A. I didn't know that throne Sh- was set in Germany. Sh- it's Shania Twain? Shania Lockthwain. Lock. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so this is going to be the first time I get to talk about one of my mono black decks, which are uh, near and dear, near and dear to the darkness that is my heart and soul. And this is the segment where we break down a commander by its parts in just a few minutes. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah, explanation of the segment that would help. Uh, Ayara, first of Lockthain, uh, is a legendary creature, obviously the commander, elf noble for black, black, black. Uh, she states she's a two three. Uh, whenever Ayara or another black creature enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. She also has an additional ability where you can tap her, sacrifice another black creature, and draw a card. Um, so this deck really revolves around ETB's uh, enter the battlefield effects of black creatures. So trying to either put out a ton of black creatures, maybe tokens, or um, you know, it's, it's she herself is a card draw engine. Um, and you can do all the fun things that mono black does. And she also has the added benefit of being black, black, black for color cost, um, which is both a drawback and an advantage uh, for devotion uh, abilities, which best black card. I keep talking about it pretty much every week. Gray Merchant of Asphodel. Yeah, very good. I, also known as Gary. Gary. Gary is amazing. And I hope we see a reprint of Gary in the next Theros block so I can play him in standard. You know what? I mean, you might. You might. Five mana is fair for that card. I mean, it's not broken. It's printed at common. I mean, but I would like to see new cards that care about devotion. Yeah. Yeah. So like all the black devotion cards and then also Gary. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so the way that I have a Yara built is a pretty standard mono black reanimator deck. So you play 
value cards that when they die they do something like kokusho the evening star when he dies each of your opponents loses five life you gain life equal to the life lost this way um and you play reanimation spells like reanimate animate dead um to to bring these creatures to cheat these creatures back from your graveyard and you'll play cards like entomb and uh grave not grave pact and buried alive to put creatures into your graveyard from your library and reanimate them. However, there are specific cards that need to go in your Ayara deck. And, you know, need is a loose term, but you should probably put them in here because they're not even that expensive. That just synergize so well with Ayara. One of them that I'll start with is an instant win in most cases. It is called Plague of Vermin. Oh, yeah, this is a special card just for this deck. Just for it this deck. It literally does not work this way with any other commander. Doesn't so, belong anywhere else. And I really else. like these kinds of cards. Right. That, that's specifically why I picked this deck, because it is a unique mono black deck. And this one actually is my mono black deck that is completely built right now. Also building a son of Curic deck off to the side via Shadowborn Apostle, but we'll talk about that later. So, Plague of Vermin. For six and a black, it's a sorcery. It says, starting with you... Each player may pay any amount of life. Repeat this process until no one pays life. Each player puts a 1-1 black rat creature token into play for each one life he or she paid this way. So you got 40 life? I say, does the one, the card has to resolve before anyone starts bidding life, which is very important. Card resolves, says, okay, I'll bid 35. Wait, what's your life total? Is it 34? I'll bid 34 life. It's like, oh, I go down to six? All right, I have 34 AR triggers on the stack. I'm going to drain you for 34, and I'm going to go right back up to 40, right. and you're dead. So it is seven mana. Black does have the capability of ramping pretty well, so you're going to want to put cards in there like Cabal Coffers and Urborg, and, and even though AR is black, 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 you're going to want to put Colorless Ramp in there like Soul Ring and what, that what kind about, of stuff. What about Cabal Stronghold? You can put Cabal Stronghold in. Budget option. As long as your mana base will allow. As we talked about last week, when it comes to mana bases, monocolored mana bases allow you the most opportunities to put utility lands in. I take that to a high degree to the point <laughs> where Cabal Stronghold isn't that great in my deck. I play cards like Nykthos Shrine to Nyx, Temple of the False God, uh, Ancient Tomb, you know, all these cards that aren't basic swamps. So it's it's not always a great card to have in there, but if you have a budget mana base, it's or, or just more swamps you don't you don't necessarily need these extra mana cards and sometimes they do hurt you a yara costs black 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 you need three swamps to get her out right so it, you know sometimes it does hurt you um a couple other cards specific that are really good in this deck um Edr endrick sar master breeder for four and a black whenever you cast a creature spell put x one one black thrall creature tokens onto the battlefield where X is that spell's converted mana cost. So he's on the battlefield. You cast a five mana creature. You get five one ones that are black. Ping for five. Yep. Um, Aberrant Overlord is a five black black six six flyer. When he comes in the battlefield, you get a one one black uh, harpy creature for your devotion to black. And Ayara's got three devotion, and he himself has two. So you're automatically going to be pinging for five when he comes out. Needless to say, any other creatures you have out there. Right. Um, Bitter Blossom, and it's more new... more aptly named uh, Shitter Blossom. Yes, the Dread Horde Invasion. <laughs> um, both bring out a one one token at your upkeep for one life. You know, you do pay one life, and you get the one life right back. Um, Ophiomancer, fantastic card at every upkeep. You get a one one black snake if you don't control the one one black snake. So you if can... you have a sack outlet, you always get a snake. So, and, and as we know, Ayara herself is a sack, but you do have to tap her. However, there is a card that is commonly played in the Atla Eggs deck called Thornbite Staff, which is an equipment. Um, oh, that do you says, run that in this too? I actually do run Thornbite Staff in this as well, because every time a creature dies, it untaps. Sure. I didn't think about that. That's so, very good. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of a really good draw engine. Um, and then... I guess my favorite card combination uh, in the deck is actually a, a not a, the creature is probably again only played in Ayara. It's called Sangrier Autocrat 
For a three and a black, it's a human. It's a two, two that says when Sengir Autocrat enters the battlefield, put three zero one black surf creature tokens onto the battlefield. When he leaves the battlefield, exile all surf tokens. But you're getting four triggers when you cast him on a Yara. Mm-hmm. You can combine it with an equipment called um, Nim Death Mantle. That says whenever a creature dies, you can pay four colorless, return that creature to the battlefield uh, with Nim Death Mantle attached to it. And it becomes a black zombie in addition to its other creature types. Um, and then you can get the three surf tokens back. If you have an Ashnod's alt- alt- altar out there or a Phyrexian altar, you can do that infinite amount of times and ping your opponents to death. Gross. Some other budget options um, would be Infernal Genesis. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player puts the top card of his or her library into his or her graveyard. He or she puts X11 black minion creature tokens into play where X is that card's converted mana cost. You're milling things into your graveyard, which is what you want to do in a reanimator deck anyways. Plus, you're getting a bunch of 1-1s one every time it happens. Each one of those 1-1s one drained one. Uh, that one costs four black black. Um, and, yeah, that's pretty much it. Get those black creatures out. And then, if you can't kill your opponent with the tokens, just reanimate Grey Merchant yeah. 12 times in one turn. Yep, that does it. Um, and we'll post a deck list for that. Um, later this week. Yeah, yeah. I'll, um, I'll slap that up on Architect. And then we'll post it on Twitter. We will tweet it out. Tweet. Tweet, 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 tweet. Um, well, I think that's it. Gah. <laughs> it's, it's a it's hawk. Like, it's, like a, it's like a Twitter, but with a it's like, gah. Wait, which, hawker. Which one was that bird that comes in on Arena, but it's clearly a hawk noise? I have oh, a Gilded bir- Goose. I have gilded a bird's deck. Goose. You do have a bird's deck. <laughs> gilded <laughs> Goose on Arena literally screeches like a hawk when you play it. You're like, what is this? It should have been Hong Kong honk, honk, Goose. Honk, <laughs> honk, honk. Um, well, thank you everyone for listening. Um, we, we appreciate all of your support. And if you'd like to contact us, you can find us. Um, you can find our podcast on Twitter at Guardian Pod. Uh, you can find me at At Flory. You can find me at Squeaky Pig M. M. T. G. No, it's not, not M. T. G. It's just M mm, because just, mm, you know because Twitter because he's the most bestest, most bestest, the only one. Um, also, take a look for hashtag Guardian Project Pod to find our posts and episodes. We'd like to hear from you, so send along your comments and any topics you'd like us to talk about. We'll go over those on the next episode. You can also email us at guardianprojectpod at gmail.com. Thank you, Austin, for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Uh, go ahead, take a look for the YouTube channel. Um, like like, and subscribe. And um, watch, watch our episode and let us know what you think of it. And yeah. then um, you'll see me on camera in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Playing some Pioneer. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Goodbye. So bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> I did not like that. <laughs> that was no. That was that was mono black I are going bye bye to your life total. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a weird baby boy. <laughs> like like you probably see that in a movie. But a scary movie. A scary movie with or little the... baby noises. Bye bye. <laughs> Do you play Withering Boon in any of your black decks? I don't even know what Withering Boon is. It's a two mana counter spell in black. No, I play Imp's Mischief instead to just redirect spells. Yeah, this counters creature spells. Only creature spells? Only creature spells. You can have your creature. I don't care about your creature. <laughs> Unless it's Acidic Slime going for my Urborg or Cabal Coffers, then I hate you and I will be vengeful for you from the rest of the game. Oh, well, that's why you have uh, Withering Boon.